this is probably one of the biggest screw-ups in all of modern medicine. Okay. So um, for nearly half a century, women were enjoying the benefits of hormone replacement therapy, estrogen or estrogen plus progesterone. Mm -hmm. If uh, they, s they still have your uterus intact, you need to add the progesterone to it. So either E or E plus P. Women were living longer, mm -hmm. years longer, uh, they were the symptoms of menopause were being alleviated. Mm -hmm. They were if they fell or were in a car accident, they were much less likely to break a bone. The risk of heart attacks went down almost in half. Mm -hmm. The um, cognitive decline and brain fog of menopause was reduced, and there was a thirty five percent lower rate of Alzheimer's. Okay, there were all these tremendous benefits. Okay, and that's just a small fraction of the benefits I, I laid out in the book. But I'm waiting for the yeah, but. So and then the about yeah, 20 yeah. years ago, a researcher at the NIH announced in a press conference that he had just completed the largest study ever done financially okay. in taxpayer history, a billion-dollar study conducted by the NIH, and announced that hormone therapy causes breast cancer. Okay. Now, it, he didn't release the data. About a week later, it gets published in a journal. I find out that all the co-authors, they were basically ambushed at a meeting saying, hey, we found this result, we're publishing it, you know, you can't really make changes to the uh, article, it's already been accepted. If you look at the actual data in that study, mm -hmm. it does not show any statistically significant difference in breast cancer rates among women who took hormone therapy versus placebo. Yet 80 to 90% of people, including doctors, 80 to 90% of doctors still today believe that press conference announcement, even though the data never supported it. So I found the, the researcher, okay. and I went to him in doing the research for blind spots, and I told him, how could you make this recommendation? And he basically acknowledged um, that it, did, it was not statistically significant, but it was close. Mm. It approached statistical. It was nominally, you know, yeah. approach. I'm like, you know, that's not a thing. Like, if that's a thing, like, we don't have science. Like, yeah. snake oil cures cancer and vaccines cause autism. And, like, you have to use statistical standards. Right. So but then why do you believe there. he was so convinced? And why did he make this pro proclamation so publicly and we end up where we are all this time later. What do, you, well, what do you think the reason was? I don't know. I went back and it turns out that he had made statements publicly and had written that we have to stop the hormone replacement therapy bandwagon. Okay. He was on a mission. Hmm. And when the data didn't support what he wanted to see in the data, he just said it anyway. Because when I spoke to him, it was clear he believed it in his heart to be true. Hmm. And so uh, it caused tremendous damage. I mean... 50 million American women probably have been denied hormone therapy because of his announcement. Yeah. Maybe 200 million worldwide. One of the, the greatest health benefit interventions in all of medicine for women uh, denied to, now not 100% of women are candidates, but the vast majority of right. women. And they, to this day, they should ask their doctor about this and re read about it.